Okay, let's uh, listen to Francois Wals, the last speaker of the, the meeting, and Francois is from Ecole Polytechnique, Paris, and uh, he will talk about the model of uh, gas surface interactions. So please, Francois. Well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here after so many years. So thanks to our colleagues from Lisbon and also from Braga and also from uh, somewhere, I said, I don't know, maybe in Moscow. In for organizing this and and uh, and inviting me after so many years, it's it's uh, it's a great pleasure being here. Uh, I want to talk about joint work with Kazuo Aoki from um, uh, from Kyoto, uh, Vincent Chubanjigli, also from Ecole Polytechnique, although in a different research unit, and uh, Shingo Kosuge, also in in Kyoto, about uh, gas surface interaction. So, in, in the kinetic theory of gases, it's been uh, an old problem to understand how gas molecules interact with the surface of immersed solids, right? Um, so usually this is done by the boundary condition that you impose the, for the solution to the Boltzmann equation, and uh, such boundary conditions have been proposed already a long time ago. There is the famous accommodation boundary condition, it was proposed by Maxwell uh, in the late uh, 19th century. So you see here that it's a sort of uh, interpolation between uh, specular reflection, specular reflection being this Rx of C. C is a molecular velocity here. And uh, you have accommodation to uh, some uh, Maxwell distribution with the temperature of the wall and uh, the pressure, um, or if you want the density, being given by the zero mass flux uh, condition at the wall. Uh, you have more elaborate condition. There is uh, one that's, uh, that belongs to last century. Uh, it was proposed by uh, Carlo Cecchiniani and Maria Lampis in 1971. Uh, you have other conditions uh, proposed at the same time by Williams, by Kuscher, and his uh, co-workers in uh, RGD Symposium in the mid-70s. But these conditions are mostly phenomenological. Right? I mean, they're sort of... Uh, you postulate the structure of boundary condition, and you you fit some parameters, some, a few physical parameters, and that's that's actually how it's uh, explained in the in the book of Cherchignani. So what we try to do here is to understand uh, a sort of simple, uh, albeit uh, physical, ab initio model from which we can derive some kind of boundary condition. So here. Uh, the solid is going to be a crystal, and you have several layers of periodic arrays of fixed atoms, like indicated here. And these atoms, they generate a physisorption potential W. Uh, think of uh, Van der Waals forces. And here is a typical picture of W, where you have some uh, decreasing, uh, decreasing and convex part of the potential here. And uh, so it, it looks like, if you want, for all practical purpose, you can think of a Leonard Jones potential, right? We have uh, something that is attracting and, and uh, repulsive near the core, right? Okay, so now gas molecules are going to be accelerated by this, by this potential, and they, they, they will interact with the phonons created by the vibration of the crystal, uh, and you can model that uh, through some collision integral. If you don't want to go, go into uh, uh, wave functions and things like that, a collisional model uh, with the phonons will do. All right. So, um, but it's, it's really essential to think of this geometry uh, of the potential here. So if you, <coughs> precisely, if you uh, keeping in mind the geometry of this potential, uh, you can think of the collisionless dynamics in the surface layer. So forget about the interaction with the photons. Um, and um, you want to solve the UV equation for your uh, distribution function of gas molecules. Um, so you take the Poisson bracket of uh, the total energy. So here you have uh, the rescale because there is no mass uh, kinetic energy of your particle with molecular velocity c. Here is the potential energy, standard Poisson bracket. You set this equal to zero for zeta, which is the uh, space, which is the distance to the to the wall, and cz, which is the molecular velocity. And uh, you solve for, for uh, this equation equal to zero. So you see that um, uh, if you look at the flow lines of this potential here, uh, because of this uh, part, uh, what you will have is that typically uh, gas molecules will enter from the bulk of the flow. They follow the, 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 the line of the potential, and they will uh, exit 
here. So that corresponds to um, the piece of the potential which is repulsive, but there's, there's one part where particles will remain trapped, okay? Sorry, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, well, particles will remain trapped in some regions here. There is a separatrix, of course. And um, uh, okay, so if you don't have any collisions, that's what that's the picture. And the boundary condition that you can hope is that given <coughs> the uh, incoming uh, molecules coming from the bulk of the gas towards the uh, towards the wall. Um, then you get the outgoing distribution of, uh, of molecules. So it's, it's a very simple model for which you have essentially no thermalization with the wall. But of course, uh, of course, this is a bona fide boundary condition for the Boltzmann equation, which gives you <coughs> the density of gas particles entering the bulk of the gas in terms of that approaching the wall. Right? But here you have essentially no thermodynamics with the interaction of the wall. So if you want to do that, you have to add these some kind of collision integral with the phonons on the wall. And, and uh, this is what I'm going to show in a minute. However, uh, I want to insist on a, on a very uh, special feature of this model that there is no need of a boundary condition for the Uville equation at zeta equal to zero. Because if you look really at this dynamics here, so you see that particles coming towards to, towards the, the boundary zeta equals zero will actually not reach that boundary because uh, near that boundary you see that W goes to infinity, so the, the, the potential will repel the molecules and the molecules will not reach the boundary because you have near the boundary infinite potential. Okay, so um, good. Uh, so now um, <coughs> Yeah, so as I said, zeta equals zero is unreachable by gas molecules. So in this feature, even though there is a wall at zeta equals zero, you don't need a boundary condition on the wall, right? So the boundary condition will really be this reflection process which I showed you. And now we have to explain how it's perturbed by the interaction with the, uh, with the phonon. So here you take the simplest imaginable interaction, that is, uh, you take a relaxation model. Uh, your phonons are going to be at equilibrium, so distributed like by a Maxwellian. This Simplest imaginable. It's a BGK if you want. Uh, <coughs> it's a BGK model, but except that here the temperature and the and um, the velocity of the, this Maxwellian is prescribed for the phonons. And the thing, the only thing that you change is the uh, this density of uh, particles interacting with the phonons, right? So this density is the uh, bulk velocity. The, it's the um, microscopic density. Of your uh, of your gas molecules, which you averaged in the uh, variables parallel to the wall, right? You somehow, somehow you don't pay attention. To, you don't think of the variations, uh, tangential variations uh, along the boundary to, to first order. You, you you want to think of the uh, the things that are transverse to the boundary where you have the significant variations of the model. All right, so the typical examples of W, as I told you, are going to be uh, Lennard Jones potential of this, uh, this type, right? And the thing that, uh, so that's the, the W which is here, and the thing that you have to uh, say a few words about is the relaxation time here. So you want the relaxation time uh, to, have, um, uh, to have a finite thickness uh, because you want the interaction with the phonons to be confined near the boundary, obviously, right? So the phonons will not interact with molecules far away from the boundary, too far away. So we can think of an exponential relaxation time or a polynomial with a high enough degree here. Okay, good. So the first thing uh, that you can prove is this, um, uh, is a unique nice statement. So uh, use the surface layer is linear, uh, surface layer equation, the, unique, the uniqueness of the solution follows from studying the homogeneous problem. In other words, you prescribe the density coming from infinity equal to zero, and you would like to show that the solution everywhere is going to be equal to zero. So here you have this uh, equilibrium, if you want, it's a Gibbs distribution which is attached to the, um, to the Poisson bracket. Um, assuming that uh, W uh, for negative values of zeta is equal to plus infinity, not minus infinity. It's minus W which is equal to minus infinity, so that because you have exponential minus W, if you here you put plus infinity, the, this prohibits uh, particles to enter that region. 
right? And then you solve your uh, favorite equation here. So it's an equation which is posed in the whole space. Um, uh, you assume that at zeta goes to plus infinity at the zeta uh, cz is equal to zero. That's the homogeneous problem. Uh, and, uh, it, it, but you, you assume that f is bounded by the equilibrium, is dominated by the equilibrium attached to this uh, Poisson bracket, uh, which is here, right? So f is below this equilibrium here, and therefore there is nobody for uh, zeta negative. Right, and therefore you can prove that f is equal to zero almost everywhere in zeta and c uh, z. So that's sort of the energy argument that produces this. Okay, so it's, it's kind of reasonable in the sense that if you if you seek the solution uh, satisfying this inequality here, uh, then you don't need a boundary condition of zeta uh, equal to zero, as I told you before. Right. Okay, good. So we're going to look for solutions in this class. And um, now um, <clears throat> you might think that it's not uh, very convenient so for those of you who know a little bit about uh, half space problems and kinetic equations, which is sort of a kind of talent, if you, if you want, uh, which is an old class of problems that's been studied uh, quite a lot by Cercignani and people also in radiative transfer in, in the 70s. So uh, it's uh, quite inconvenient to have this derivative and CZ here. It's not very pleasant. It's not something that you would like if you're in this business. So it's a good idea instead to change uh, variables so, so as to make appear only a, a derivative in zeta, right? And so the way this is done is, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> instead of zeta and CZ, uh, the appropriate variables to be chosen are zeta and the energy. But the energy, of course, if you express cz in terms of the energy, you have to distinguish whether cz is positive, cz goes towards the, uh, towards the wall. Right? So you have to introduce two variants of your distribution function, which is f plus minus zeta epsilon. Uh, so it would a plus corresponds to particle uh, flowing away from the boundary, and with a minus, it corresponds to particle uh, heading towards the boundary, and the definition is this, right? So here you have the uh, absolute value of CZ. Now, if you do that, uh, you will get rid of the D by DCZ uh, term here, and you will have a much uh, nicer equation. However, uh, there is a slightly unpleasant feature here which is that because of the specifics of the potential, you have to pay attention to the fact that zeta is not going to live in a half space. But, uh, uh, but you see, uh, if epsilon is negative, this epsilon here is negative, then zeta is going to be confined in a finite interval. So, uh, so this is explained in this picture here. So if you have an energy level which is positive, essentially your uh, zeta will vary from this point, which doesn't touch, touch the boundary, to infinity, but if you're here, uh, you vary in this interval, which is detached from the boundary, of course, but you don't go to infinity. So this corresponds to the physisorbed particles, I mean, that's sort of um, <coughs> prisoners to some distance of the wall, and um, they don't interact with infinity. So as my friend uh, Jan Prenier puts it, you know, this, when I showed this model, he told me, you know, this model, it reminds of the German mercenaries of the Roman Empire protecting the walls of Rome against other German tribes, right? So that's uh, essentially the thing that you have to, to keep in mind, historical analogy, of course, no quantum mechanics here. The thing is that the particles uh, trapped here, uh, they interact by the collision with phonons with the other particles, so they, they don't remain here forever, right? If you think of this uh, analogy, you can you can change your allegiance, right? You can, yeah. I mean, anyway, so enough uh, historical analogies. But that's, uh, that's essentially how it works, right? Uh, and so with this, uh, here is the surface layer in the variable uh, zeta and epsilon. So here you just have derivative with this uh, space variable. And uh, it's the same equation as before, but in the new variables. And you have uh, the boundary condition that now have to be imposed at these points, at the endpoints of the, of the physisorbed phase, or, um, or at infinity, okay? And of course, you have continuity uh, for particles uh, coming here and returning in that direction, and same here. 
Good. So uh, with that, uh, so you have uh, the problem which is written here um, with the new definition of the macroscopic density, the new definition of the Maxwellian. And the idea is that if you prescribe f at infinity, um, uh, now it's for particles approaching the wall, you would like to uh, know the distribution of particles emerging from the wall. So in other words, you would like to understand the limit of f plus uh, uh, at zeta going to uh, plus infinity in terms of f minus at the same point that is this f infinity which is prescribed. Right? So that's the, uh, that's the game. All right, so um, now, um, if you want to solve this problem, then the idea is to approximate the solution by the so-called iteration on the source method, which is very well, very well known for uh, transport equations, for linear Boltzmann equation. So in other words, what you do is you uh, predict the uh, uh, integral part of the solution. So in other words, you predict the macroscopic density, and you solve with that prediction for the distribution function itself, okay? You solve this problem, so now it's a linear transport equation. You solve for fk in terms of nk minus one, and then with that, once you have fk, you compute an nk by this uh, formula here, and you iterate uh, this process, okay? So if you do that, uh, then uh, you can, so I, I showed that you, show you a um, uniqueness result for this, for this problem here. So here is an existence result, and at, and at the same time, you have the uh, way of constructing the solution. So um, assume that f at, in, at infinity is uh, controlled by these Maxwellians. So I remind you, this is the class, of, this is the class where we uh, seek the solution. I absolutely uh, need to, to remain in this class, because that's what you need in order to have uniqueness from theorem 1. Uh, so if inf f infinity satisfies this inequality here, then you can show that if you start from, uh, if you start your iteration with f not equal identically to zero, then you generate an increasing sequence of functions, which says always below uh, e to the minus epsilon of the square root of two pi, with the same constant as here for the initial, uh, for the uh, data at infinity. And uh, correspondingly, you have an increasing sequence for the macroscopic density, which is bounded from above by a, the same constant here, e to the minus w of zeta, where w is the uh, potential, the physics auction potential. You can prove that in the limit as k uh, tends to plus infinity, of course, by monotone convergence, you converge to a solution f plus or minus, and nk converge to uh, n of zeta. n of zeta, of course, is the uh, macroscopic density attached to these pair of densities, and f plus or minus is going to be the unique solution of the surface layer, uh, satisfying the, uh, the, 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 this, this bound for which we have proved that the solution is unique. Right. So um, in this way, you construct a solution to uh, this problem here. Uh, you construct the unique solution of this problem here in the class of solutions which are bounded by the uh, uh, by the Gibbs distribution attached to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, to the Poisson bracket, right? Defined in terms of the uh, of the physics option potential. Good. So uh, now um, let's uh, discuss a little bit the, this uh, what happens at uh, as uh, zeta goes to plus infinity. So if you if you analyze this uh, iteration uh, here, which you can do because it's you solve the, this equation by characteristics. Um, sorry, so I'm going in the wrong direction. Here I am. Okay. So what you can what you can find is that as zeta goes to plus infinity, so f plus zeta and epsilon is going to be uh, f minus of minus square root of two epsilon, which is the, the incoming velocity, right? Because I remind you that w at infinity is equal to zero, so the velocity is really uh, square root of two epsilon. There is no potential energy at infinity. And this is multiplied by a coefficient, which you can compute explicitly. Um, so these coefficients, it's a theta of zeta a of epsilon infinity and epsilon, uh, which is given by this formula here. So here, you have this mu, which involves the, um, uh, the relaxation time of the collision with the phonons. And you have the uh, interaction potential, which is here in the energy uh, in which you inject the particles, right? So uh, you, you have an explicit formula here for this coefficient, 
And you have a part of this limit, uh, which is the thing that enters the bulk of the gas, uh, which uh, instead requires solving the surface layer equation because it depends on this n of s, which is the microscopic density uh, in the in the half space, right? I mean, in the in the in the surface layer. Okay, so um, so to repeat, this this piece is explicit. This one is not. Okay, this one requires solving the problem. Um, okay, but nevertheless, uh, if you think of this iteration here, um, in other words, this uh, iteration of the source uh, method, which I show again, so here you, you predict the microscopic density uh, and you solve for FK and, and then you iterate. So this uh, converges rather uh, quickly, exponentially, so you have an exponential convergence, and again, the type of convergence uh, is can be made relatively explicit involving the um, uh, the, uh, the, t the relaxation time, which is either uh, exponential or <coughs> polynomial with sufficiently high degree, which I showed before, right? And um, so you have exponential convergence here. So I don't know whether you can accelerate that or not. Uh, I don't know, but in any case, you already have exponential convergence, perhaps not with. Uh, um, perhaps this number in practice may not be very far from one, but if you iterate sufficiently, uh, it will convert exponentially fast. Okay, uh, all right, so with this, if I return to the boundary condition, once you have this, then here's what you get. So the boundary condition for the Boltzmann equation in the bulk of the gas, again, we find the, um, <coughs> uh, we find the density the solution to the Boltzmann equation for particles approaching the boundary, uh, those reflected going back into the gas. So you have this coefficient, which I told you is explicitly computed in terms of tau and uh, the potential. And you have this piece, which is uh, less explicit because it involves this uh, n of s, which has to be, uh, which has to be solved anyway. Right? Uh, but nevertheless, if you look at this equation, it's really reminiscent of the, uh, the Maxwell uh, accommodation boundary condition, except that here, uh, the, the difference with the Maxwell condition is that this uh, accommodation coefficient depends on the energy at which you inject the particles, uh, in the, at, at which particles approach the boundary. Right? So that's the difference in the, in, the Maxwell, in the Maxwell model. This alpha, this accommodation coefficient, does not depend on the energy. It does not depend on the energy of the incoming particles. And um, to go further, if, if, if you assume that is, uh, this uh, n of s here uh, is in fact a constant, uh, you can solve explicitly this stuff here, and you find again something that resembles very much the Maxwell accommodation condition, except that here the accommodation parameter depends on the energy at infinity. And that's the only difference. But again, um, I mean, this is just a, this is just a very crude approximation of what you have here. Uh, let me show you some numerical simulation to 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 finish, uh, um, to 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 um, so that you can see by how much this is an approximation uh, of reality. So we are going to look at this uh, Leonard Jones potential here. Uh, relaxation time is going to be uh, polynomial zeta to the four. And the incoming distribution at infinity is going to be a Maxwellian, which you center wherever you want. And uh, so here, you have the numerical speed of convergence, which you can, uh, for uh, uh, the difference between, the, um, between two successive terms in the microscopic density. So you see that if you, if you iterate sufficiently many times, it falls uh, rather quickly to very acceptable uh, values of the approximation, right? Okay, so, um, um, okay. So, so here the various colors, they correspond to various places in the, in the boundary layer. Um, all right, so here is the macroscopic density as a function of the position. So you can see that here there is this, there is this piece that corresponds really to the, the physics soaked part of the, of the gas. And so, really, it's not, it's not really consistent, it's not really, uh, it's not really true, uh, it's not really a good idea to approximate n by a constant. So, it, it converges rather quickly to a constant, but nevertheless, there is this phase that carries the, the information or whatever depends on, on the physical phase, 
uh, which is here present, right? And this is this has been done for various uh, temperatures and so on. Uh, and uh, so uh, here is the based on this, you can look at the uh, reflected uh, distribution function in terms of the incoming uh, incoming uh, density of particles, right? So this is for various temperatures and velocity, incoming velocity. So to conclude, so here this is a very simple one-dimensional model uh, for which you can prove uh, mathematicians like existence, uniqueness, and so on. So the solution is obtained by the iteration of the source method as a limited increasing sequence. Uh, convergence is uh, exponential, rather easy to establish. And the, perhaps a nice feature, uh, the good selling point for this model, it leads to a boundary condition for the Boltzmann condition, for the, for the Boltzmann equation, uh, which uh, has an accommodation coefficient. So it's very much the same structure as for the Maxwell uh, boundary condition, except that you have an explicit dependence of the accommodation parameter in terms of the, uh, in terms of the energy of the incoming particles. So that's perhaps the <clears throat> the most uh, the, the the first uh, difference with the uh, the classical Maxwell boundary condition. With that, thank you for your attention. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? Any question? No. Sorry. No, no. I mean, no, no. Question. Uh, maybe maybe, maybe uh, I should thank everyone for, for this <laughs> beautiful conference because there's no questions. So no questions. Uh, this is an affirmation. So thank, really thank you again for all of this. Okay. Okay, so we can close the meeting. We thank, so we, we organizers in general, we thank you all for coming, for being here, for participating in the discussion, social movements, and so on. No, no, it's nice to have you here, all of you. Many of you are friends of us nowadays. <laughs> So uh, Patricia said at the beginning, but I will remember, next edition will be in Trieste at the beginning of September. So next year, of course. Next year, we did not yet start with two editions per year. Uh, then in the following year, we will have, a, I should say, a special edition in honor of the Dovi it seems it will be in Lisbon, if nothing changes the plans. But okay, we'll have information, we will maintain you informed about all these trends. And so I think we can close and go for lunch. Thank you all.